We are looking at history about to be made here at the Kennedy Space Center. And I don't know if you can see, but we've got people actually moving out of the buildings, moving down towards that countdown clock, which is now saying one minute, 30 seconds. This is absolutely nail biting and everybody just wants to get a glimpse of this. I've never experienced a rocket launch before. I don't know what to expect. But already we're getting some semblance of cheering. Um, and I can tell you that driving into the centre this morning, there were people lined up either side of the road, binoculars trained on this spot, waiting to see what will happen, whether or not they can actually take off after that nail-biting disappointment on Wednesday, where it was just 17 minutes towards launch, and they had to call it off because of an excess of electricity in the air, i.e., thunderstorms, which have been incredibly dangerous. We've got no weather problems right now, but don't forget this is an incredibly small window of opportunity. We're, we're talking barely a minute for this rocket to take off, so everything just depends on the next 36 seconds and counting. And what those two astronauts must be thinking, I don't know. We know they've trained for this, they're incredibly calm. They were calm when they had to leave the spaceship um, just on Wednesday, they were very philosophical about it. But we're now down to 19 seconds, and I think we should just watch and wait what happens because the countdown is now well underway. Falcon 9 is in startup. Dragon is in countdown. FTS is armed for launch. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off of the Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon. Go NASA. Go SpaceX. Godspeed, Bob and Doug. America has launched. And so rises Copy. a new Why era not? of American space flight, Stage one and with it the nominal. ambitions of a new generation continuing the dream. 20 seconds into flight, stage one propulsion is nominal. T plus 30 seconds into this historic mission. Flying crew on board Dragon and Falcon 9, and look at them go. Falcon power telemetry nominal. M1D throttle down. We're throttling down to get ready for the period of maximum dynamic pressure. We're in the throttle bucket. Reports say all systems are go. Vehicle is supersonic. We've exceeded Mach 1 on the Falcon 9. M1D throttle up. We're throttling back up to full power as we're through one Max Q. Copy, one Bravo. And we heard that one Bravo call out. That's just the second abort zone that they're in. They'll continue to be on this until the first stage has done its job and they switch over to the second. At this point, Bob and Doug pulling about 2.3 Gs, 2.3 times the Earth's gravity, already moving at over 1,500 miles per hour. We've heard the call out for MVAC engine chill. That's getting the MVAC engine ready to light. That'll come at about 2.44 into flight. Right now, everything continuing to look good. Next major event coming up is going to be the triple. We'll have main engine cutoff of the nine first stage engines, stage separation, and then ignition of the second stage engine to continue to carry astronauts into orbit. Coming up in about 20 seconds. M M1D throttle down. We heard we're throttling down the Merlin engines on the first stage. And we have Miko. Miko. Two Alpha. Falcon stage separation confirmed. Copy two Alpha. MVAC ignition. All 
All right, we have stage separation confirmed. The first stage beginning its flight back. The second stage being powered by that single Merlin 1D vacuum engine has ignited and is now carrying Bob and Doug into orbit. So they're going to continue under the power of this second stage. Stage two propulsion is nominal. Which will cut off at Seco or second engine cut off at about eight minutes and 44 seconds into today's flight. So a little over five minutes to go still on this second stage. You heard the call out to Alpha, so they're now in the longest abort zone that carries them all the way from about North Carolina up the eastern seaboard almost to Canada. Things looking good though, getting good call outs, nominal propul pul propulsion on that second stage. Bob and Doug continuing to make their way into orbit. Dragon SpaceX, nominal trajectory. Acquisition of signal in Bermuda. SpaceX Dragon, nominal trajectory. All right, here in nominal trajectory, so Dragon pointed in the right direction, continuing to make their flight uphill. Heard acquisition of signal Bermuda, that's one of the other ground stations that they're using to get telemetry and data back from this spacecraft. Stage two propulsion is still nominal. Well, there were grins all round when we watched that launch. Uh, let's uh, speak to uh, Jane O'Brien, who had the view from the ground. Jane, describe what it was like. That was incredible. I have never seen anything like it. I mean, the suspense, the build-up, and then to actually see, hear, and feel it take off. My whole body was vibrating with the sound. Absolutely incredible. You could actually feel it through your entire skeleton. It was extraordinary. And then to see that bright light just suddenly exploding and moving upwards, I really have never seen anything like it. What an incredible privilege. And for those two men on board, what a privilege for them and for SpaceX and for NASA to be able to pull this thing off in spite of all the weather problems that they've had. I, th I think this is, is just absolutely tremendous. A day in history for America and the world. Laura Forchick and uh, Libby uh, Jackson are still with us. Laura, it has to be said, as much as it's exciting, there's a moment of anxiety too, isn't there, for everyone watching this? Oh, absolutely. I've seen several uh, shuttle launches in person. And even from a distance, you are cheering them on and both uh, praying and hoping the best for them that nothing goes wrong. And at this point, it just looks amazing. And, and of course, you never know what could happen in the future during a mission. Something could still go wrong. But from this end, it looks beautiful. It does. And uh, Libby, you never tire, do you, of seeing the Earth from that perspective? Never indeed. I've been looking at the pictures um, and it's it's amazing what modern technology allows us to see with these rocket launches. I've been watching them for many years. Um, we're going to see in a little while the landing of the first stage back um, in Florida. And, and you can see the pictures um, of it coming Earth, coming back towards it. It's all beautiful, but there are still um, about four or five minutes till till they reach orbit. And, and as you said, until they get there, until they're safely in orbit, and on their way to the International Space Station, I'm still just watching everything very co closely. Um, so we, we sort of keep seeing if it all keeps going OK. I think that um, President Trump is speaking. We might be able to listen in. We knew that he was heading down to Florida. Let's see if we can hear him. And uh, real talent, real genius. Nobody does it like us. So it's great to have this whole program back. And it's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. We have many more things to come. It's a lot of jobs. It's a lot of technology. You know, we have Space Force now. And thank you very much for being here. General, we appreciate it very much. Number one, you know, one of the things we've done is created the Space Force. First program in, uh, if you look, uh, I guess it's 74 years now. It was 72, and now it's 74. And uh, time flies. But since the Air Force, so we have a major branch of the military, Joint Chiefs of Staff, Everything full, full honors. It's called the Space Force. We did that during the Trump administration. Uh, Mike Pence was so helpful. Everybody here was helpful, frankly. We needed lots of votes, and we got them. And really, it wasn't that hard once we started explaining what it's all about. But 
Space will be one of the most important things we've ever done. I think so. I think space will be one of the most important. I put it up there with 280 federal judges, two Supreme Court judges. I think space will be one of the most important things we've ever done. So uh, we'll see how it all works out. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you inside. Okay, great job. Thank you, sir. A very proud President Trump there, um, claiming it for the Americans, of course. But, um, Laura, this is very much a, a cooperation between a whole range of people and nations. An international effort going forward with uh, not only the International Space Station, which is already international, but also Artemis. Um, and, and of course, Space Force has nothing to do with, with NASA or this current mission. Um, but SpaceX being a commercial company, they intend to launch commercial astronauts as well as private astronauts from other countries. And the next mission, they have a Japanese astronaut on board to launch with the, with the Americans to the International Space Station. Libby, just how uh, new and different is this particular uh, spaceship design? Because things have moved on a bit since the last one, 39 years ago, haven't they? Indeed, the, the, the last brand new uh, human spacecraft we saw head into space with the space shuttle, that was designed back in the sort of end of the 60s and mostly through the 70s. So this this really is brand new. It looks like something out of a sci-fi movie. And I do think SpaceX have had one eye on that, but absolutely everything has been designed with function and safety first. Um, from the 3D printed helmets through to touch screens um, in the module, brand new spacesuits, everything's new. Um, everything's being put through its paces today. It is a demonstration flight to check it all out to make sure it works well. Uh, so far it looks good, but it really is um, a new era of space travel. But of course they, they still get to practice, or have to practice, don't they, uh, Laura? Manual flying, they actually take control of this. As Olivia said, they've both flown twice before. And although there is a lot that's automated, there's also a lot for the astronauts to do, both on launch and, of course, with docking coming up in 17, 18 hours. And uh, then, of, of course, coming back. There's, there's always plenty for astronauts to do. Yeah, 19 hours of uh, flight. Lots to do on board, but they also need to get some rest. Let's watch the launch again. Three, two, one. Zero. Ignition. Lift off of the Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon. Go NASA. Go SpaceX. Godspeed. Bob and Doug. America has launched. And so rises a new era of American space flight. And with it, the ambitions of a new generation continuing the dream. 20 seconds into flight, stage one propulsion is nominal. plus 30 seconds into this historic mission. Flying crew on board Dragon and Falcon 9 and look at them go. Falcon power telemetry nominal. M1D throttle down. We're throttling down to get ready for the period of maximum dynamic pressure. We're in the throttle bucket. Reports say all systems are go. See the headlines as they happen and watch BBC News live in the app and get the full story with bbc.co.uk forward slash news. Follow the story for all the latest with BBC News.